Uh, thank you very much for, for coming. I want to talk about farming on crutches. I've had the privilege of working in rural Africa and Asia for the last 50 years and met a lot of um, inspiring uh, groups of people and uh, this, is, this is one of them. So uh, first of all, I want to take you to uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, Sierra Leone, if you don't know, is on the west coast um, of Africa and it's one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, I recently uh, learned that one of the amputees had died, leaving a widow and five children. And when I asked what would they need to be able to survive, they said, well, if she could have $50 a month, uh, that's a pound a day to survive. So that's the level of poverty that we're, we're talking about. And in the 1900s, there was a terrible civil war. Uh, tens of thousands of people died. And a lot of children had lim limbs that they lost a leg or an arm. And either they lost it because it was chopped off by a machete or because there was a stray bullet or there was a landmine. Uh, and those are the people that we're now going to be dealing with. Then in 2014, it was the epicenter of the Ebola um, epidemic. Um, but back in 2001, and I had the privilege of, of being there in 2001 when the war was coming to an end and spending time working in the rural areas trying to rebuild, help to rebuild the rural economy. And completely unbeknownst to me, a young man called Mambut Samai started a thing called the Sierra Leone Amputee Sports Association to try and bring these young people together who've only got one leg um, to believing that sport could generate, help them with their recovery. And uh, last year, uh, it started a 10-acre farm. And that's the story we're going to talk about now. But first, I could just take you back. Those of you who've not been in a, um, a war zone, uh, it can be quite terrifying. You meet groups like this, and you don't know who they're loyal to. You see terrible uh, physical destruction of, of homes. That's a, a friend of mine. You see schools destroyed. And on the right, you see a, um, a school um, made of tents. All the children in all the classes are in that one tent. Um, and then if you've heard of blood diamonds, just to give you an idea, uh, blood diamonds come from various sources. But these are alluvial. And what happens is during the dry season, people put sticks in the river. And this slows down. Uh, when the rains come, it slows down the water, the alluvial. In, in the soil uh, drops down into the, uh, into the riverbed. And then in the dry season, uh, they go and dig it out, causing huge damage. Then they spend the dry season sifting through the, the alluvium there to get the diamonds, which they then sell to agents who sell to us. Uh, and that, in turn, finances the war. Um, this is actually Liberia. I also was involved in Liberia during the civil war there. and. Um, this is rubber, which is the mainstay of the economy. And this is slaughter tapping. Now, normally when you, when you, like, when you graze, you leave the grass time to, to, to recover. And just the same with rubber. When you tap the rubber, you um, allow the tree to recover. But the two groups, the people who are desperate for food and the various armed gangs who want money, they do what they call slaughter tap. And slaughter tapping is this continual tapping of the rubber until, of course, the rubber trees then die. Um, some of the victims of the war, if you ever wonder what a child soldier is, well, those are particularly young ones, but those are nine years old, and they would have carried uh, a gun. Uh, um, fortunately, they've been, they've been uh, recovered. Um, down on the bottom right, you see um, a typical refugee camp. And then above the, the amputee footballers, which you'll see again just in a moment. Again, th this is in Liberia, but everywhere you go, you see signs where um, just pictures of children saying, have you seen my mum and dad? Um, these are, every, everywhere you go, there are artillery shells. So I paid these young boys something to collect the artillery shells. Um, we brought them together. And we got a blacksmith to cut them in half, and we made them into vegetable knives and uh, sold them at 30p each. So something positive came, came out of that. So these are the amputee um, footballers. There's 350 of them. They're men uh, and women, boys and girls. 
And in 2012, I took my son, who was then 16, just finished his O-levels or GCSEs, I took him to Sierra Leone and we met the amputee uh, footballers on the beach at Lumley. And in 2014, they got through to the finals of the World Cup. And they asked Tom, my son, to write their um, anthem or a, a theme song for them, uh, which he did. Um, but then, well, uh, you'll see what happens. But anyway, this is what he wrote, and this is give you some idea. Oh, that's it, sorry. <laughs> Sierra Leoneans love one another. That was 2014. Um, well, since then, the, the movement has grown, and, and, and in addition to playing football, they also do a lot of peace building work, uh, peace building work because they're acutely conscious um, of the effects of war. Um, anyway, in, in 2010, Ban Ki-moon, who was then the UN Secretary General, gave them 10 acres of land to develop for um, uh, football and for entrepreneurship. They had no money. Um, in 2018, Mambut Samai had the opportunity to go to Japan for a year to the Asian Rural Institute to learn about permaculture, agroecology, call it what you like. Uh, he came up fired, out, fired up and wanted to develop the 10 acres for a farm, but they had no money. And so in January last year, we were able to get £20,000 from the Lush Foundation to develop this 10 acres as a farm. And there you can begin to see on the left, on, 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 on the right, the, the, the developer beginning to develop the farm. So first of all, putting in the security. Then uh, you can see the sweet potatoes uh, on, the, on, the, on the right there. They're going in. They've built a, uh, a farmhouse, a farm office, a store, a training center, toilets. 
they've sunk a well, they put in solar power, solar pump, they have got, um, uh, here you can see the solar pump, down on the bottom left you can see trickle irrigation going in. Um, this is the farm. And ju but just to give you some idea of what it's like to farm on crutches, uh, this is uh, Mariatu. I greet you in the name of the Father and of the Son, Jesus Christ. I did this work because I love the work. So thank you. God bless you. Okay. Now this is the kitchen. I'm going to cook for the farmer. <laughs> Thank you. So amazing. That was the kitchen. Um, so they're farming, as you can see, they're um, farming organically. Um, and this just to give you some idea of what it's like to actually harvest peanuts on, on crutches. So the guy, the second on the left, he's got, got one leg and he uses his crutch as his other leg and then he's picking up the peanuts with, with two hands. Right, so then uh, they make a lot of compost and they make bokashi. Um, and uh, they've also got the Soil Mentor app. And I hope if you're farmers, you've all got the Soil Mentor app and are using it on the farm. Because these guys are using it out in, uh, in Sierra Leone. Um, uh, and then I'll quickly go through this. But there's a, a PFLA webinar on making bokashi. But basically, they, they harvest the... Um, the uh, soil microorganisms out of the tropical forest and they use it to make. So here we are, you take um, cooked rice, you put it in split bamboo, you put it in the forest to 18 inches for three days. By the time the soil bugs have then eaten the rice, but the bugs are left behind, you harvest the bugs, you then mix them with brown sugar and then with rice bran and with soil and you add water, uh, manure, uh, you, you um, ferment it for about uh, five days at maximum 50 degrees centigrade. You then uh, harvest it, dry it, store it. And that is all that they use as fertilizer on the farm. And on the left, you can see them scattering the uh, bokashi. And on the right, that's mambut in Japan, and that is rice produced entirely by Bokashi. So just a few more pictures of the guys there with, um, with their um, on crutches. That's uh, Lahai Makia, uh, one, one of the footballers. Um, there again on the left you can see them with the corn. And here this is Lahai again uh, making compost on crutches. Uh, there that's Mariatu again, the lady you saw earlier. There she is harvesting uh, the maize. And then down on the right, one of her colleagues is seed saving. They don't buy any seed. All the seed is harvested 
on the farm. So then they have a program of working with uh, children from the local schools, teach them nutrition um, and uh, farming. They teach them how to make compost, uh, how to weed, how to harvest, and then lovely, to how to celebrate. I think that's particularly lovely. They teach them they, how to celebrate and learn that there is dignity in labor. Then they go home and influence their parents. Then also working with uh, farmers, bringing farmers, local farmers onto the farm. Um, this big focus on not using chemical fertilizer, the use of compost, so the farmers can avoid credit because credit is the curse of so many small farms. They're encouraged to buy a hybrid seed and buy fertilizers. The drought comes, the flood comes, they get into debt. So the more that they can learn to, to avoid those external purchases, the better. And I would think that's probably true of UK farming as well. Um, so there they are, that's training the farmers, uh, teaching them about permaculture, about how to grow a food forest. Um, particularly important, how to, how to make good use of small spaces. Um, and then down on the right, there they are um, saving seed, in that case of, of peanuts. So, um, big thanks to all of those people, some of you perhaps here, uh, who've supported them, the Lush Foundation, Roar as well is a small charity in Sierra Leone. Um, the Permaculture Association, the Permaculture Magazine have both given them free membership. Uh, Vital Seeds gave them a free course on uh, seed saving. Uh, VitaCycle donated the Soil Mentor app. Uh, and then with the possibility of a refurbished uh, basic utility vehicle, I'll show you that in a moment. So thanks to everybody for that and to Groundswell, obviously, for um, uh, for supporting us. This is the basic utility vehicle that they've got the option to buy for £2,000, refurbished, um, and given that they have no, no power on site. Um, so all of the, everything that I've shown you has been achieved in a period um, of 15 months from scratch at a cost of £25,000, the cost of a small electric vehicle, perhaps. I think it's been done entirely by hand, mainly by people on crutches, um, and they did it during a pandemic when there was lockdown. So I, quite impressive, really. Things they want to do in the future, they want to complete work on farm. They want to bring in 15 amputees to design their own training course of how amputees can become farmers. And then, they want to bring another 35 amputees in to experience the training course that has been delivered by their peers. They want to bring in 240 school pupils and their teachers, 150 farmers, uh, and then 20 what we call change makers. These are people who will um, have more training and they'll live in the villages and a bit like, bit like extension officers. So those are the plans for the future. And the total cost of that is £50,000. So £50,000, if there are 460 direct beneficiaries, that's £100 per head. And if each one of those influences 10 people for the whole lot, it's £10 a head. So um, there's a possibility that Sierra Leone might host the African Cup of Nations. And if it did, then this could go right across Africa, but that's a dream for the future, maybe or maybe not. So you can see the project creates opportunity, raises the profile of farming, increases biodiversity. Um, it allows the farmers to become independent of purchased inputs, and it helps to bridge the gap between the poor and the rich, bringing the community together. Um, and particularly important, it removes the need for external finance. So if you want to support them, 
There is a chip and pin. In fact, it's not at the PFLA stand. It's at the Merchantine stand where you, where you can buy your hats. Um, or you could go to the Groundswell website. Um, there's a link there, and it's also in the leaflets. Um, Bitly, farming on crutches. If you want a mnemonic, imagine you're talking to your partner. Uh, be in touch dot love you slash farming on crutches. Be in touch dot love you slash farming on crutches. Thank you.